Dispose, yeah, disposing dust. Yes. Wow. Woo, like, shake it out. We do our ankles. Yeah, y'all can't see our ankles. Shake the ankles off. <laughs> you got to shake your ankle off. Like, what, is, yeah. what does that mean? Like, when you hear, even thinking back about what Bishop said, what yes. does it mean? What comes to mind when you think about disposing of dust? I think about starting anew, yeah. being refreshed, yeah. getting off the old things that have stuck on you. So when you go from a rejected situation, yeah. Yeah. Shake it off, shake it off, dust off, yeah, because there's more to come, there's more ahead. Wow, 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 because because he was teaching about to your point, he's teaching us about how to handle rejection because it happens, it, it's a part of it's life, it's a part of life, everyday life, honestly. Yeah, like not only do we face rejection in our pursuit for you know a spouse, a, a marriage, right. or whatever it may be, but we face rejection in work. You face rejection in work, you can even face rejection trying to get over while you're driving. <laughs> you would think that a signal light would indicate that- I would like to come over there, That I would like please. to come over there. And you're like, no. Mm -mm, no. And the thing that makes it cold is, is that- they, they will look forward. It, like the Kermit, well, you, don't you see have to me. pull up like Kermit the Frog. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. I know you see me trying to get I over there. I promise you, I was right here in Inglewood <laughs> yesterday. I was at uh, Fair, Fairview and La Brea. Okay. And this woman pulled up beside somebody else and let them have it for not letting her over. She was talking so loud that I was standing on the curb, on the corner. Did you clutch your pearls? I, I didn't have on pearls, but proverbially, <laughs> yes, I clutched my pearls. I, I am, am I witnessing? You are. Frustration in action? Yeah. Am I witnessing rejection? Yeah. Manifest itself as something? Yeah, she didn't shake off her dust. She did not shake, she <laughs> threw her dust. She threw her dust. She th and, the, and the woman just kept her window rolled up and she's like, as long as I look forward, this is not happening. This is not happening. I am in my safe space. Yeah, I'm in my <laughs> bubble. Stay away from me, you know? You know? But, but that, the strange thing is, when we think about rejection sometimes, mm -hmm. we like to say in our, we stay in our safe space. Yes. We won't true. venture out and try anything new Absolutely. because of our fear of rejection. So the dust that we've gathered from one one scene of rejection in our life just sit there. It just sits there and accumulates mm -hmm. day after day, week after week, month after month, year after year, year after year, year decade. Now, right after decade. So now everything that we see is through like this dusty filter. Yes. You can't even prepare yourself for anything new. That's the thing. Yeah. You can't move forward because you all dusty. You all dusty. God's like, shake it off! Shake it off! Oh, that's shake it off! Shake it off! Can you see my ankle right there? <laughs> shake it off, duh. You gotta have flexibility. In right, your, in this your, is real, real flexibility yeah, right it's there. It's a muscle down, some tendons, <laughs> Achilles flexion to get that dust off. You got, to, you got to be able to shake the dust off. You do. As you go from one level of life to the next, you're yes. gonna face rejection. It's going to happen. Yeah, and as you face rejection, you're gonna have to learn how to keep moving forward, how, how, to, to how to even find people yes. who may help you to kind of shake that dust off. Yes. You know sure. what I mean? Cause Partner some, up. Because <laughs> sometimes we go places where we shouldn't have got, that's not the dust you should have been in. You shouldn't even had that dust on you. Yeah, yeah. But <laughs> think, let's think about how that even shows up like in a work scenario, mm -hmm. right? As you go maybe from one job to the next, maybe somebody's terminated or, right. or they, they're changing, you know, feels and they're mm -hmm. looking to kind of get into something new. What, what's a way that they might need to shake the dust off going looking for a new job or something like that? I think, think we are our worst critics. That's great. And so if someone else comes in or maybe they got promoted, you don't know what was on their resume when they showed up for their interview, right. but they come in and it seems like they are just flying. They're getting promoted so fast yeah. and you're like, well, then I guess that means I'm not good at anything. I guess right. they don't like me or, you know, blah, 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 blah. And you take this negative cloud around yourself yeah. from place to place. Oh, well, I'm not good at anything. I'm not likable. People don't want to promote me. People don't want to see me succeed. And now you have gotten content in your unsuccessful season. Right. When it's right. supposed to come to an end and you're supposed to move on to something else, try something new. Yeah. Maybe the reason why you didn't get promoted because God wants you someplace else. Yeah. You know? Ooh. Maybe like God said, hey, you know that application that you keep pulling up online and yeah. then closing out. Yeah. Why don't you fill that out? Fill that out. Hit, hit submit next time. Upload your PDF. You know. And your Word document, your cover letter. You know. Get it out there. You got dust on your resume. Just shake the dust off dust your, your resume. Dust your resume. Dust your resume off. Yeah. Try it again. Try it again. Yeah. Because that, that can change the course of your life. Yes. Your ability 
to successfully navigate rejection and move on to the next thing. It opens up so much more for you. Right, right. Because if you don't, you will let it weigh you down and you will become stagnant. Exactly right. But, but you said something else that just kind of peaked up in my mind. You said God said no. Mm -hmm. God, God was the reason behind the rejection. Maybe sometimes. And, and how know. often do we think and how often have we been taught in other circles mm -hmm. that God doesn't reject us or the sign that we're blessed is that God always says yes. Mm. You know what I mean? That's so true. Yeah. I think we, we, we take it personal. Yeah, right? You know, we like, oh, God doesn't love me. That's, what exact, that's exactly you know? what it is. That's the download. And, and sometimes God's like, I know you want that one little small thing, but I'm trying to give you all of this. If you could just come a little bit closer, exactly right. come a little bit further down the exactly road, right. meet me right here. Look at all the things you could have. Right. Well, we like, I just really want to cry about this one pebble. And God's like, I got pebbles, diamonds, rocks, rubies, you name it. And you're like, but my pebble. But my, but my, but my, but my pebble. tiny pebble. Lord, look at this. <laughs> look at this. This is what I wanted. You're like, yeah, that's sweet. Can, yeah. Won't you come? Yeah. Is there one? Won't you come? Yeah, exactly right. Exactly right. But that's, that's amazing because we'll take that as a commentary on how God feels about it. Exactly. Because he told us no. Mm. The God who rejects my plan for my life doesn't love me. Right. How could he love me if he doesn't give me what I want? Or is this rewinding the tape to a couple weeks ago and there's provision if mm. you would just participate. If you would just participate. Get out of your feelings yeah. and participate. Well, I'm going to back it up a little more. It starts with a look up. Look up. <laughs> look in. Look, look out. out. Look, look around. around. Look, look up, up again. again. <laughs> We're going to have to just do that because yeah. that's the series dance. That's, that's just the choreography. Do it. Now, that that's is choreography. not sign language. That's not sign language, <laughs> but it is the last Sunday uh -huh. of um, Deaf Awareness Week. Month. That's it. That's it. Holy hands. Holy hands. Holy Praises. hands. We want to say a special thank you, a special praise God for our Holy Hands ministry yes. who Sunday in, Sunday out, service in, service out, serves faithfully in his house ministering to our, to our community and being a blessing right there with the family of champions. So special shout out to you, celebrating you, celebrating you, celebrating you. They are an inspiring group. Yeah. Because yeah. the amount of focus that mm -hmm. it takes to listen to what's happening in the service. Right. Communicate that out to someone else. And sometimes we use slang or we yeah. use terms that there isn't a sign for. Right, right. So now they have to come up with something that means the same thing and then interpret that right. in sign language and still keep listening. Yeah. May the Lord bless you. May he shine his face upon you and be gracious to you. Because that's a level of focus that the average person, I don't think, has. I, I, I can raise the hand of one person who does not. Two. There are two. two. There, are there are two. two. There are two. <laughs> <laughs> but they're joining you all this morning for yes, Fresh Gen. Yes, they are joining Fresh Gen to yeah. do the song with us. Wow. Well, they're, they're, you know, they normally sign during the 930 service. Certainly, right. But they're going to be up there, on lifted stage. up. Yes. So y'all can see them. Yeah, see the gift on display. See this gift. Yeah. I'm going to try not to stare because I'm just in awe. They're singing like watching. Like. Like, oh, wait, wait. Me and my mic this. just. Right. <laughs> Trying to do the sign. Right. And meanwhile, Chris is like, get out the way. Get over there. And you just think, like, wait. Sing your part. Oh, right, right. <laughs> that is funny. That I is guess. funny. Family, we're going to go into the house in just a moment. Maybe you want to take time right now before we go in. You want to share this on your feed. Share it with your followers. Share it with your friends. Let everybody who is following you know what you're doing this Sunday morning and just how excited you are to engage in this time of worship with the family of champions, with people from around the world. We love it and appreciate it greatly yes. if you share this on your feed. Yes. Talking about dust disposal. Dust disposal. This idea that as we shake the dust, mm -hmm. we're believing that there's greater down the road. You have to have faith that there is more. And often we stay in rejection because we don't have faith to look forward. There you go. It's a faith act. It's a shaking is faithing. Shake, shaking is faith. Shaking is faithing. Ooh, that's hard to when say. When I shake, I'm shaking in faith. Can I say shaking faith? Shaking faith. <laughs> shaking faith. Shaking faith. Um, but I believe that there's greater later. Okay, so you got all the drops. I got bars. You got this rhymes morning. and bars. Shaking faith. <laughs> greater later. More in store. More in store. More in store. I'm believing that this rejection is not final. It's not final. That this, this no is just a step I'm taking.
to God's eventual yes, yes for my life. The thing that God wants to do. Get ready for the next casting call, because it's an audition, right? Come on. You, he did say that. It's an audition. Because we're talking about dating, and, and he was alluding to Dr. Erica's home, mm -hmm. Dr. Erica Holmes' home. book, Dating, dating on with Purpose. Purpose. Yeah, yes. Dating with Purpose. Speaking of which, living well every living Thursday. Well. Living well. Oh, we got to give him the gestures. You gotta Thursday, Thursday at 7 p.m., living, living, living well. well. This is our praying and receiving. Living well. She's a choreographer. I, I, I did not make this up. <laughs> okay, Thursday's living well. We're going backwards. Wednesday night with Pastor John Paul download. Foster is the, is the download. Download. I'm, I'm learning. Because you got to be cool I, with Pastor JP is the download. <laughs> I almost feel like like jive turkey. <laughs> you jiving me, yeah, man. You jive the download. Anyway, the download. <laughs> and then on Tuesday, get your wealth cycle. Right. Get your is that it? Get your money right. Get your money right. If your money is funny, if your change is strange, you want to get with Pastor George yes. Tuesday nights right here on all of our streaming platforms. But we're budgeting. Talking we're about budgeting. budgeting. Talking about budgeting. And then he's gonna transition into talking about a word that he made up. Get this, savesting. Say vesting. Save vesting. Say what? Save, <laughs> Save vesting. Saving and investing. Saving and investing. You put them together. I like that. Yeah, it's That's like catchy. It's gonna bless your soul. Oh yeah. yeah. The word is already blessed. Yeah. I'm stay vesting. Sometimes right we now. get rejected. We face rejection in the stock market. Ooh, now listen. Rejection with investments. <sighs> Rejections in our finances. Still gotta shake the dust. Shake the dust. Still gotta shake the dust. Shake the dust. Somebody put that in the chat. Shake the dust. Shake the dust. Shake, shake, it, shake it off. Yes. Because we're going into a new uh, message this morning. Yes. How to Way fish. To game. How to fish. How to fish. I, I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't know. To get it. It's, it's fine. It sounds really practical. It does. It sounds like we're gonna learn something that we can take right, we can walk right out of the building or mm -hmm. click off, you know. And, and immediately begin to apply. Yes, yeah. I think so. Yeah, but but Bishop has something for us this morning. I'm excited. And and, and if you don't know already, uh, Brittany's singing with oh. Fresh Gen, so be on the lookout. I will be amongst the other. Amongst the saints. <laughs> Where amongst, my voice can blend. <laughs> amongst the men, the, the, the song, the songsters, the sing, songstresses that's, and singers. That's women, right? Yeah, that's, that's women. Yeah, that's women. We the choir. The choir. <laughs> we, the choir. We is in the choir. Yeah, y'all in the choir. So <laughs> we are in the choir for anyone who's looking for correct grammar. I got that. I got that. You the, you the, you the grammar police. Sometimes I have to be, but sometimes my southernness takes over. It's a it's a struggle. Mine too. I'm like, where are you from? Like, that, that's what happens. That's yeah. how you know you slip. They go, where yeah. are you from? Yeah, I'm like, oh. Ah, oh, man, it slipped up. out. Yeah. I was blending in. Right, and then I tell them to shake the dust. Shake our dust. Shake that dust. Yeah. Like, that get, dust. Get, that, get that dust. There's greater later. Greater later. More in store. <laughs> More in store. Family, we're going to go in the house in just a moment. Prepare yes. yourselves again in, the, in these next few moments just Absolutely. before we go into worship. Share this with a friend. This series has been a blessing to you, I'm sure. And as we conclude it, you want all of your friends, all of your followers to get in on this last message because it is going to be a blessing yes. and it's going to come with a challenge. I, yes. It's going to come with a challenge and you don't want to miss it. So prepare yourselves. Again, we're going to go in the house in just a moment. Unplug your distractions. That's a good one. Unplug That's your a good distractions one. or put them away. <laughs> That's so a better one. Unplug them. That's a better put one. Put your distractions away. Tuck them away, put them face down. All that good stuff. But if you're able, join us. Please stand, family. Let's worship. Let's worship. Yes. So we can share. Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, won't you stand on your feet? Let's honor the Lord in this house. Come on, put your hands together and lift up the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, come on, celebrate him. Celebrate him. You at home, come on and join us as we bless the name of Jesus and honor him for who he is. Won't you turn to your neighbor and say, I'm glad you're here to praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Come on and magnify his name. We declare this, there's beauty. Come on, say it. There's beauty in my brokenness. Come on, I got true love, I got true love instead of pain. Instead there's freedom, though you captured me. Come on, I've got joy. One more time. There's beauty in my brokenness. Say, I've got you love instead of pain. Oh, there's freedom, though you captured me. Say, I've 
got joy instead of mourning. Say you give me joy down deep in my soul. Down deep in my soul. Down deep in my soul. You give me joy. for the joy that he has given us. How many are just glad to be saved? That he washed us, that he cleansed us. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you right now for the freedom to bless and honor you, God. We thank you that, Lord, in your presence, Lord, is the fullness of joy. And we come this morning to declare ourselves to you, Lord God. We want you to be seen in us, Lord. We want you to shine through us, Lord. God, take out everything that's not like you, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, we place ourselves on the altar, Lord, this morning. And we lift our hands in surrenderance. And we love on you this morning, God, as we worship you in spirit and in truth, God. We declare the joy of the Lord. 
want you to shine in our hearts. Hallelujah. I want you to say this. So take out everything not like you Till all they see is you in me And let the glorious light of Jesus shine through me Come on, let's try that. Everybody declare it. Take out everything. Come on. Till all they see is you and me. Say, let the glorious light of Jesus shine through me. Hallelujah. I think you got it. Come on, everybody. Let's declare it. Say, take out everything. Till all they see. See, let the glorious light of Jesus oh, shine through me. Can you surrender that to the Lord? Come on, sitting it. Take out everything. Lord, till all they see you and me. See, let the glory. your strength. Come on, say it again. You are my strength. Come on, 
said strength like no other. You know he's your joy. Come on, say you are my joy. You are my joy. Yeah. Say joy like no other. Joy like no other. Say joy. Like
it again. Say, reach as to me. Thank you for reaching me, Lord. Reach as to I didn't deserve it, Lord, but your love reaches. Over and over, over and over again, you reach. Hallelujah, Lord, say reach God, we come to give you glory this morning because we declare you are our strength. You are our strength. When there's nothing left in us to give, we know, God, that you continue to be our strength. And so, God, we come this morning just to praise you that your strength reaches to me. I'm not being lifted up. I'm not standing on my feet because I have it all together, God. But I know who has me together. So, God, I give you glory that your strength reaches to me. We give you praise. We give you honor. And we give you glory. In the mighty name of Jesus, who gives each one of us strength, help me praise him and say amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You may have a seat. Sometimes when we're worshiping like this, sometimes the very words that we're singing give us flashbacks of our life and moments where we've seen God step in and his power and his strength reaches to me. I don't know if it's ever reached to you before, but I thank God it reaches to me. Amen? Well, family, I got a, a testimony about God's reaching power. Because you came, you showed up, and you showed out. And I want you to see the impact of when God touches your heart, how his strength can move from California all the way to Jackson, Mississippi. Let's see what God has done. One thing I know to be true about the family of champions, when there's a need, whether it's down the street or across the world, we are there with open hearts and giving hands. We know that we are blessed to be a blessing and together we did something amazing in the lives of those who needed our help. Water came from the north, the south, the east, and the west. You even asked your friends, your coworkers, and put it on social media. You volunteered your time, your talent, your treasure. You literally became the hands and feet of Jesus Christ. After an amazing outpouring of love and support, the next step was to get to Jackson, Mississippi. In Jackson, Pastor George and I met some amazing people. We got a chance to lift the spirits of those who needed a helping hand. It was love in action. We met the pastor of Unity Baptist Church, Pastor Orlando Franklin, and the wonderful people in his community. Today has been an incredible opportunity to be the hands and feet of Jesus here in the city of Jackson, Mississippi. Truckload of water was literally gone in an hour and a half. It shows there's a need here, and I'm just grateful to God that we were able to do something to help meet the need here in the city. It also shows the impact and the influence of United Fellowship Church. I'm Absolutely. telling you right now, the people are incredible. We're sitting here trying to bless them. Now they're trying to bless us with fried chicken and Mississippi food. And guess what? We're going to eat all of it. <laughs> the scripture said the harvest is plentiful. Come on. But the laborers are few. And so we're just so grateful here at Unity uh, for having friends across the country that will come so far to distribute and to bring water, shall I say, to us here in Jackson, Mississippi. To the people that will see this in Los Angeles, California, and other areas uh, thereby that supported this effort, we are indebted to you. And we are so, so grateful. We're so thankful, and we're praying for you as you continue to pray for us. Through your overwhelming generosity, we were able to support not only one, but multiple locations. We're able to assist a preschool, an elementary school, an elderly facility, a nursing home, and guess what? We also headed over to Jackson State University and became a blessing to the students over there on the campus who were in need of clean water. You know, the past weekend we had our first football game. 
Uh, we had uh, almost 40 some thousand uh, people here, fans and spectators at the game. And so with that, we ran out of water uh, during halftime. With that being said, you know, we just appreciate this donation as we're still going through this water crisis to help out the city of Jackson, the, the students on the campus, and also the fans here at Jackson State University. Uh, you know, we can uh, all talk about it, but we appreciate those who are about to work. And without those who have come together to support us, we, this wouldn't be how possible. So we want to say thank you from the bottom of our heart. Get this family in total. We were able to send over 1 million gallons of clean water. I got to say it twice. We were able to send over 1 million gallons of clean water to Jackson, Mississippi. You truly made a difference. We truly are the family champion. And I thank you. God bless you. You better help me thank God. Over 1 million gallons of clean water because if you allow God to use you to be an extension of his hand family I want to say thank you thank you thank you uh, a few things I want to share with you before before uh, we, we get into the word and worship family when, when we, we got a notification Saturday that the water was clean I have to look up we get there on Monday and the water has chlorine in it they said, when you take a shower, close your mouth. Me and Pastor George didn't know what to do with that. They said, you know, when you take a shower, just close your mouth because chlorine was in the water. Second thing is they said that because of the water, uh, they announced that the water was clean. There were no more distribution sites. There was nowhere anywhere in the community they can come get water at a distribution site. But God, somebody say God. God knew beforehand that this was going to happen. He set up his own distribution center and blessed the people. Here's the second thing, family. You cannot do this by yourself. How God used you, how God used KJLH, a guy black, how God used uh, Center of Hope, how God used Mount Zion Baptist Church. You can't do any of this by yourself. But guess what? Saturday, the football players had a game uh, the Saturday before we got there, and they ran out of water at halftime, and students were passing out from heat strokes. But because God set up his own distribution site, Jackson State University and the students there now have clean water because of your generosity. Last thing, I have to say something to the people online because we, we were uh, at the loading dock and people were sending is it, uh, Uber Eats. They were using every app they possibly could to find someone in California that they could get the money to to send the money here. Some people were in Texas. Some, they were all over the place. But sending a driver to, it was like 12, 12, uh, uh, 12 cases of water, just one person. So I just want to say thank you, but help me thank God because his strength reaches to you. Tell your neighbor it's time to give. Y'all, y'all done seen it. How many know God blesses you to be a blessing? What you saw was Philippians 4 and 19. It says, my God shall supply all of my needs, wait, according to his riches and glory. So when we were telling people that in Mississippi, because they only said you could get whenever around two cases of water, but we, not when they came out to, to us, we gave them what they needed, amen? And then we told them that. We said, take down the sign that says, that says two cases. I said, we'll give you as much as you need. And then we fulfilled that need, amen? Because God blessed you. Then you gave it to us, and then we went on a truck, and then we gave it to them. Amen. And God blesses you to be a blessing. I used to say that to you, but now we really going to be saying it because they got to experience. We all got to experience God's hand in blessing us. Amen. Praise the Lord. It's time to give. Thank you for the hand. There are four ways in which you can give, and as you prepare your very best offering, if you need an envelope, just lift your hands, and Usher will bring one to you. The first way in which you can give, everyone online, you can click it. Right now, there's a link in the chat that you can click on, or you can always go to our website at faithfulcentral.com. You click on the Give button, there'll be a drop-down menu where you tithe. You bring back to God what he's blessed you with. Then there's an offering 
where you give. And then there's a very special line item. It's called pastoral care. That's where you sow into Bishop's life, just as he's sowing into your life. The second way in which you can give is you can text it. Text the word give to 833-321-3222. Third way is that we have an app that you can download on Google Play or in the App Store and be able to utilize that. The fourth way is you can mail it to us or drop it off. Our address is 333 West Florence Avenue, Inglewood, California, 90301. And as you see, they're giving receptacles right at the doors that you can put your offering in. Amen. And we want to thank you for being faithful and consistent in putting God first, being a cheerful giver. And when God blesses you, what are you? Okay, that's how I did good. When God blesses you, what are you? There you go. Amen. And just also know that we pray every week for you. And we also pray that God would open doors in the area of jobs and new businesses. We call it job check. So far this year, God has blessed this house with over 441 new jobs and businesses. If you got a job, you started a business, or you got a promotion, stand to your feet. It is job check time. If you got a job, got a promotion, or you started a business. All of you online, if you got a job, got a promotion, started a business, type in the chat, I got a job, I got a promotion, or I started a business. We're at 441. Brother, you 442, 442, oh, over here, 443 new jobs and businesses. Amen? Oh, 444 new jobs and businesses. One more, 445 new jobs and businesses. How many know that God is in the blessing business? If you don't know, don't worry, we can show you, and we got the receipts God is in the blessing business. Amen? Pastor JP was running everywhere. You saw on the tape? He would, he, would, he would be literally on the truck loading, unloading, and then I was a part where I kind of moved it, and then he'd be handing them out. He'd be here, there. It was almost like, almost like Oprah was like, you get a case, you get a case, you get a case, in a good way. Amen. And that's all because of your giving and being faithful in that. Amen. Praise the Lord. I want to acknowledge all of our guests. If you're visiting with the family of champions, it's your first, your second, or your third time. Just wave at us, just wave at us, just wave at us, just wave at us. Amen, amen, all of our guests. On behalf of Bishop Palmer, First Lady Tagada, Co-Pastor JP and Lady Carmen, we want to welcome you here today in the family of champions. This is a Bible-based, spirit-led, Christ-centered church. We pray that you learn something, come back again and again to visit with us. Amen, and when you come back, you're no longer a guest, now you're family, Amen. Bishop? All right. We're going to be blessed by the choir. And as they come out.
Sing it again, say my hallelujah. Sometimes you don't even have the words to express how good God is. Sometimes you can't even muster up even the hallelujah in the midst of pain and trials and tribulations. Sometimes you just got to let out a war cry to let the enemy know I'm still here. To let the devil know I'm still breathing. And as long as I'm still breathing, I will not be silent. Even if I can't muster up the words, I still got to owe in my spirit to declare war on the enemy. Come on, say, say, it, say. Oh, come on, declare it with us. Oh,
Oh, come on, clap your hands, oh ye people. Even if just with an O, oh, shout unto the Lord with a shout of triumph. Somebody's got victory, somebody's got a blessing, somebody's got a breakthrough. Hallelujah! When you think about how good God has been, sometimes just an O breaks out. Hallelujah to your name, Jesus. Father, it is in the name of Jesus the Christ that we come into your presence, oh God. Lord, we love you. We exalt you, we praise you, we bless you, we thank you. for all that you have done. You deserve it. You deserve our praise. You deserve our hallelujahs. You, de you deserve the honor and the glory. And so we bless your name today, O oh God. Father, do what only you can do. Move through the airwaves and those in their homes. Touch somebody. Touch somebody in their living room, O oh God. Touch in some family. Touch my sister who's watching us in their home all by herself. Touch my brother who didn't even plan to stop here but was just kind of channel surfing. And, and you ordered and ordained their fingers to come here. Now bless them. Bless that home. Bless that family. Let your grace, let your love, let your mercy go to every heart, every soul, every man, every woman, every boy, every girl, every home, every family. Father, release your love and your power in that loveless home. Lord, release your love in that marriage that is struggling with weak love Lord release your love to that man that woman and draw them back to yourself love them unto yourself you deserve all the praise the honor and the glory and you have some praises over here you have some worshipers over here you you have some grateful hearts over here and we lift our voices and we clap our hands unto you and we shout the victory in Jesus name now Lord prepare our hearts and minds for that which you have prepared for us even before the foundation of the world go up every aisle down every road touch heal save and deliver move beyond what is said and meet us where we are and give us what we need and do it in the name of Jesus the Christ amen come on help me bless the Lord one more time somebody those of you who are with us today joining us on our online campus we're honored to have you with us north south east and west this nation the next nation the other nation thank you so much for joining help me praise God for those who are joining us around the world in our online ministry amen uh, this is death death awareness deaf awareness month and you may have noticed a young lady who was a part of the choir who was doing sign language is a part of our holy hands ministry right over in this section come on give them a hand Do, give, give them this there it is there it is there it is there it is yeah 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 praise the lord we honor them and to those of you who are visiting with us we thank you thank you thank you for coming you uh you didn't have to come Matter of fact, a whole lot of folk didn't, but you did, and we, we thank God for you. We praise God for you. Thank you so much. I, I want to join um, that which has been said to thank you for your response. Thank you for loving the Lord enough to love people in Jackson, Mississippi. Amen. That, um, that vision, that, uh, that burden that the Lord gave Pastor J.P., 
Um, thank you, son, for hearing the voice of the Lord. Amen. Thank you. I uh, ask you to continue to pray. That, that crisis is not over yet. Uh, some of you may have seen reports on TV where they said it was, the, the water was clean and they turned it on and it looked like mud came out of it. Okay? Uh, and so thank you, thank you for your kindness. Uh, we had no idea that the Lord would hook us up with Jackson State University. And uh, that was a holy hookup. And uh, things that are happening there on that campus, I want you to be in prayer for them. And again, thank you. Give the person next to you a hand, just for, give them a hand, give them a hand. Amen. Now listen, I, I, I want to also thank, I want to thank those of you who have been for the last couple of weeks. Thank you for those of you who have attended, those of you who have prayed, those of you who have been a part of our services these last couple of weeks. And what I was talking, down, talking about didn't mean a thing to you. You didn't. Uh, you ain't dating, you ain't trying to date. Matter of fact, you're probably trying to get rid of a date. And, you, and, and I want, you've just been so, 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 so courteous. You've just been so, just a, a gift of courteousness and, and uh, uh, tolerance, a great, great gift of tolerance. Thank you, thank you so much for uh, not walking out on us. And thank you for praying for those of us uh, who are looking to be into a relationship. You've just been so kind. I've just been noticing some of y'all been married. Been married 40 years and y'all still clapping. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord for that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now listen, we're going to wrap this thing up today. Uh, and from today, from the day, I only want to meet with those who want to go to the next level, the next step. If you, if you don't want a date, you ain't trying to get a date. Matter of fact, you want to trade in the one you got. I ain't looking, I ain't looking for you. Okay. This is not for you. I, I ain't talking to you. Okay. But, but listen, 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 listen. If you do, if you do, I want to expand. I'm going to teach you some more things that I've, I've touched on the last couple of weeks. I want to expand and expound upon some things. Uh, I'm going to say some things today, and I want to teach you some principles. Um, I want to start, listen, if you're interested in following us and staying with this, 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 um, sanct I ain't got a good name for it, sanctified singles. That, I don't know if that's, all right, I think it's something else, okay. Uh, but, but, um, but, but if you want to stay with us, okay. October the 5th, listen, October the 5th at 7, 7 o'clock, 7 o'clock, October 5th, from 7 to 9, October 5th, October 5th uh, at 7 to 9. Um, and if you want to gather with us, we're going to pick up with this, this series. Um, the things that I want to teach you, the details, I can't do it on a Sunday morning, I can't do it in, a, in this kind of setting. So if you're serious about it, I'm going to teach you some things today. Uh, you may not be serious, you may be serious after this message, so you stay with me, okay? But if you want to follow up, we, we shared this this morning, and we're almost got 100 some people that have already signed up because we need you to register so we know if you're going to come and we know how many cookies to buy, okay? <laughs> okay. It ain't going to be no Popeyes, but I'm just saying we, we, we're going to have a little fellowship, a little fellowship. But we need to know that you're coming, okay? We want to plan for that. Uh, so that's the first, the first follow-up will be on October the 5th. I think it's a Wednesday night, and there should be a number, num yeah, number, uh, it says 7.30, it's going to be 7 o'clock from 7 to 9, okay, 7 to 9. That means that after 9 o'clock, you got time to go and do uh, whatever you're going to do after the, it's going to be a rough house in here today, I see that right now, <laughs> okay, so, 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 follow me, I was just telling uh, uh, one of my sisters in the, in the back, you know, I wait to get 75 years old to be the seniors pastor. I mean, I'm wait that to lead the seniors at 75 years old. You know what I'm saying? Uh, okay, I'm gonna leave that alone. But anyway, October the 5th, October the 5th. Okay, uh, uh, men, women, brothers and sisters. Okay, now let me just tell you this. I'm gonna teach you some things. I'm teaching some things uh, on that night. Uh, don't don't worry about who ain't there. Okay. One day this one time and a sister said, well, Pastor, I want to come, but, but no, none of the brothers show up. I got some other brothers for you. That I'm going I'm I'm to show you where to find some other brothers, okay? So we want the brothers to come, but I'm just saying, I'm just saying, October the 5th, October the 5th on a Wednesday night, okay? Um, uh, now, now, listen, here's how you do. You want to text the word fish. See? Now, don't trip off that. I'm going to explain that in the message today, okay? Somebody said fish, yeah. Fish. Fish. What is he calling us? You know. 
a barracuda? What do what, we? What? Okay, just stay with me. Okay, stay with me. It's gonna make sense after the message. Te text the word. If, now, if you don't want to come, don't, 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 don't do this. Okay, don't text. Uh, need a man. <laughs> we ain't got nobody answering that phone. Okay. Okay. Uh, um, fish. F I S A. It's gonna make sense after the message. I promise you. Text the word fish to the number that's on the screen, okay? Text the word fish, okay? Now, the gathering on October is at 7 o'clock, not, not at 7.30, okay? That's text the word fish. Here's the next resource that, you have, that we have. Dr. Erica Holmes' book, Dating with Purpose. We have a new supply. They'll be available on the outside. We ran out. We ran out uh, last Sunday. We almost had a riot out there. When, one sister came with the neck ministry. You said you had. How come y'all ain't got enough? So I'm just saying, come real spiritual. Come spiritual. Come real spiritual. That sister went off on us, baby. So we got some more books. They've been signed. Uh, Dr. Holmes has signed them. They'll be available after the service. Now listen to me. Starting on this Thursday, starting on, here's another option. Starting on this Thursday at 7 o'clock. Uh, Dr. Holmes will continue, will actually begin a series that will follow up to this about dating. It will be an expansion of her book uh, for about the next five, six weeks, something like that, at 7 o'clock this coming Thursday, this coming Thursday, and you want to catch it. It's called Living Well. You can get the information on our website, okay? So the book is a resource. Uh, Dr. Holmes series is a resource. And then those of you who want to come with me on this journey in this next season on October the 5th. Okay, October the 5th. Now listen to me. Today I want you to meet me in the book of John. John chapter 21. John chapter 21. Meet me in the book of John chapter 21. Uh, thanks to those of you again who shared with us in this effort uh, to be a blessing to Mississippi. I cannot say it too many times. We are deeply, deeply appreciative of it. Uh, you did it during Katrina. We're doing it now with this water crisis, and I thank you for your liberality. I thank you for your spirit of giving. I thank you for getting it, getting it. God blesses us to be a blessing to others. Thank you for getting it, okay? So, John chapter 21. Now, while you're turning, let me just set the stage. This story has two things to do with dating, see? Little and none. This story in John chapter 21, it's got two things to do with, with dating, little and none. But here's what we've learned. We've learned that in stories like this, in pictures like this, listen, we've learned that God always reveals principles. God reveals principles in pictures that become applicable or that we can apply and the other areas of our lives. I'll say it again, John 21, I'm gonna share it with you in a minute. And contextually, it is not a passage on dating. Contextually, it's not a, battle, a, a, a passage on dating. What we've learned is, what we've learned is that God uh, reveals uh, biblical truth in pictures and patterns that contain principles that are applicable into other areas of our lives. I've gotten, we've gotten emails, we've gotten notices from people the last couple of weeks that things that we've been talking about, about dating and relationships, people have applied. The one brother wrote and he said he was doing some things on his biz, in his business. And we learned, he learned something about this, one of the principles, and he applied it to his business. Why? Because there are principles that God uses beyond the pictures that we can apply to our lives, such is the case with this story in John chapter 21. Now listen, you, you, you can't take, take illustrations to the extreme, can't take examples to the extreme, can't take metaphors to the extremes, and so we're gonna try to apply truths that we learn in this story that will apply in the area of building relationships that honor God in the area of dating. Here we go, John chapter 21. John, <clears throat> excuse me, chapter 21, here we go. One version says, after this, one says afterward, Jesus appeared again to, his, to the disciples. 
This time he was at the Sea of Galilee. Now, some of us have been to the Sea of Galilee. By the way, off the record, uh, we're working on a tour now of next year. We're going to try to go back to the Holy Land. We'll let you know about it. I ain't got it together. Don't shout yet. We're working on it. Uh, uh, but, but, but this Sea of Galilee, Sea of Galilee, see, key location, key location in Scripture. So here's the scene. They're, they're by this body of water, Sea of Galilee. Jesus comes. Jesus is, on, Jesus is on the shore. And he sees out in the water. He sees a group of guys. By the, there's seven of them. Verse 2 says, verse two says, it was Simon Peter, Thomas, nicknamed twin. One version says Didymus, twin. Brother named Nathaniel, see. The brothers of Zebedee, that's two. And two other disciples, that's two more. So listen, there are seven people, seven people. I'm going to come back to that in a minute. That's important. There were seven people. One was named Peter, says in verse 3, uh, verse 2, named, named Simon Peter. We know him. Other one named Thomas, and they called, nicknamed him Twin. Twin. We, those are some twins in my neighborhood when I grew up, uh, and we called both of them Twin. 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 Uh, one was named Florine. One was named Lorene. They're identical twins. We just called them Twin. So this brother, they called this, his nickname was Twin, see? And then Nathaniel, that's three. Brothers of Zebedee, that was two. And then two other disciples, that's seven people. Put a pen in that, I'm gonna come back to that later on. Verse three, Simon answered, Simon said, Simon said, hey, Simon said, uh, I'm going fishing. And the rest of them said, we're going with you. Underline the phrase, we're going with you. Whatever your phrase is in your, in your version. I'm gonna come back to that. They went out and they got in the boat, underline the word but, boat, put a circle around the word boat, put it in the parenthesis, put it in, high, in, in, in uh, uh, highlight it in some way, the word boat. And then it says, they caught nothing, underline the phrase caught nothing. Whatever your version says in the response, caught nothing. One version says, we have not caught any. One version, we, we caught none. One just said none. One, ver one version says nothing. Verse 4, the sun came up. Jesus was standing on the beach. They didn't recognize him. Verse 5, Jesus spoke to them. Jesus said, yo. I kind of put ebonics and I kind of put that in there myself. He didn't say that. He just said, good morning. See? And then he said this, did you catch anything? One version says, have you caught anything yet? One version says, did you catch anything for breakfast? And they answered and said, no. No. Have you caught anything? They said no. Underline the word no. Put a circle around the word no. I'm going to come back to that. Have you caught anything? No. Verse 6. Then he said, watch this now. Throw the net off the right side. One version said. Throw the net on the other side. One version says, throw the net off the right side and see what happens. One says, throw the net on the right side and catch some. Underline the word net. I know y'all working hard today. I'm going to work hard too. Stay with me. Underline the word net, 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 net. They did what he said. All of a sudden, there were so many fish in it, they, were too, they weren't strong enough to pull on it. Here we go. Here's the scene. Jesus sees a group of guys about to go fishing. Seven of them. These seven guys get into the boat. Because one guy said, I'm going fishing. The other guy said, I'm going to go with you, man. Seven guys climb into this boat. They get in the boat. They have their nets. They go out. Jesus says, uh, what have you caught? Implying they were going out again. What have you caught? They said, man, we haven't caught Nothing. Nothing. Jesus says, hey, look, why don't you cast your net on the other side of the boat? One version says, cast your net on the right side. Now, that doesn't mean right as opposed to left. It means right as to the side that's right to get what you want. I'm going to come back to that in a minute. Cast your net on the right side. Now, Jesus is really talking about what they are called to do and be. And he's talking about it in picturesque form, in metaphors of fishing. Why? Because he has said, if you follow me, I will make you fishers of men. 
Now he's about to teach them what it's like to be fishers of men. So this scene, this scene is really more of an evangelistic thrust rather than a relationship building idea as we're talking about. But in this story, there are some principles that we're going to lift out and apply to the area of building relationships. So first of all, he tells us, here's what you need. Here we go. Get your list. Number one, the first thing you need if you're going fishing. Now, again, don't, don't let that offend you. Fishing, uh, you know, ain't, just don't trip off of that, okay? Use the picture. Uh, uh, you're trying to catch fish. Now, whatever, whatever you're trying to catch, okay? God, I'm trying to be delicate up in here. Uh, here we go. The first thing you need, number one, you need a boat. I told you to underline that word, okay? This is not deep, not deep. Number one, first thing they had was a boat. Now listen, in scripture, boats are symbols, listen, of safety and protection, especially in bad weather and storms. One more time. The first thing you need is a boat. And the boat symbolizes safety, especially in the storms of life. I said another way. Picture your life in a boat. And the boat symbolizes, listen to me, it symbolizes the safety of God. It symbolizes you being in the safe hand of God. One more time. How, how, where does my relationship start? How do I build a relationship? How do I get a date? How do I advance my social life? Here it is. Number one, you got to be in the boat. The boat symbolizes your relationship with God. The boat is a symbol of you being in the safe hands of God. God says, I'm, you're in my hands. Nobody can pluck you out. So the first thing that you need in this quest for relationship is that you start with yourself. And make sure that you are in the boat. You don't want to encounter a fish without a boat. That's what Jonah did. You saw how far that got him. Okay? So, you want, number one, you want to, you want to establish, this is very important, establish that your life is in the safety of the boat of the blessing of God. Now, let me start there. Because many of you want a date without a relationship with God. Some of you want a date, a relationship, more than you want a relationship with God. Some of you will allow your loneliness to weaken your longing for God. If you're not careful, it's an issue of priorities. And so the story begins with these guys getting into a boat. That's where you start. You start with your personal relationship in the safe hands of God. I, 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 I want to stay, I want to stay, stay there because, because, because I know what it's like to get your priorities wrong. I know what it's like to be driven by, by loneliness and allowing your loneliness to metamorphosize into desperation. I'll say that again. To allow your loneliness to metamorphosize into desperation that adjusts your priorities. And so it begins with the boat. I, 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 don't, I, don't, I don't want to rush past that. Somebody needs to hear that. Somebody needs to look at your life and take inventory and realize that there were seasons, there were times, there were days, there were weekends. When your desire to get a date minimize your desire 
to be holy. I don't want, I don't want you to make, listen, been there, done that. The first thing they did was get a boat. It, it, it symbolizes the security, the security of your life being in the hands of God. Look at you and ask yourself, is that my priority? What if you don't get a date? What if you still don't get a date? Are you safe? and secure from all alarm in the boat leaning on the everlasting arms. I, I, I need to let that hang for a minute. I'm, I'm, I'm going to move on. I'm going to move on. I'm going to move on. But God brought someone here today. God brought someone. You, you're joining us online. And God just lovingly got your attention. Because he has brought to mind your shifting priorities that have seen your loneliness metamorphosize into desperation. And your, your desperation prioritize your relationship with God. So number one, you need a boat. Number two, right there in the text, here it is, number two, you need a team. You need a team. Uh, the, the, the passage begins by calling a row of seven. Here are seven guys. Here are seven guys. You know, they, they, they're friends. Here are seven guys. And the, these seven guys, you know, they hang out together probably. They, you know, uh, they probably, I don't know if they played bid whist back in there, but they, you know, they hung out together, smoked cigars together, whatever. These are guys who are kicking it together. You know, these road dogs. These, these, these boom, boom. These was buddies, okay? Seven of them. See? Now, these seven guys launch out together. That's what I want you to see. Simon says, hey man, I'm going, I'm going, hey, what you doing this week? I'm going fishing. The guy said, well, I'm going with you, man. I'll go with you. Because, be, listen to me, because fishing by yourself ain't fun. I mean, I mean, if you catch one, If you do, who do you show it to? I mean, the whole thing about fishing is you tell, hey, man, look what I, look what I call you. you. You need somebody to shout with you, somebody to rejoice with you, somebody to get excited for you, somebody to celebrate with you. You never fish by yourself. Fishing is always better with somebody, with somebody. It's better with a group. You listen to me. You you you've got you've got to uh, um, uh, you've got to recognize the value of relationships beyond the relationship you're trying to get. Let me see it again. You you got to value some relationships you know that you already have. People that are already in your life. I'm, now listen. When you come on the fifth, I'm gonna teach you how to form a team. I'm gonna tell you who's in and who's out. Tell you how to start a team. Not, to, not right now because I ain't got time. But on October 5th, I'm going to explain to you how, because you need a team. You need a team. The Bible says in Ecclesiastes, you need a team because if one person falls, you need somebody to help you get up. See? You, you need a team. You need a team. You need somebody to say, you need somebody to say, uh, you need to throw that one back. Um, my son, Ken and, Ken, Ken and I were, were, were fishing. We have a place we go in Montana and we're fishing. And uh, the, the, the highlight of the day was not just to catch a fish. See, the highlight of the day was to take a fish and say, look. 
and have somebody there to get excited with you, to celebrate with you, somebody to join in with your joy. Now listen to me. You, 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 you need an attitude check. See, here's the first. Listen, you got to understand, you, you cannot change, you cannot do dating by yourself. Nobody on this side got it. Let me try this out over here. In other words, you, you, don't, you don't date in a vacuum. See, so, some of y'all got folk you hang out with over here, and, and then you, on Friday night, uh, a Saturday night, uh, Sunday morning, uh, <laughs> Sunday night. Uh. Anyway, you got this other life. See? Oh, I like this crowd on this side right here. This is, <laughs> this is my crowd here, y'all. Yeah, so, but here's my point, here's my point. You got this other life, see? And the people that you're in relationship, see, are separated from that life. These are guys who had relationships. The idea is this. You don't, you don't partmentalize and sex. You see, see, what y'all say is, ain't none of their business. See? It was some of their business when you got in trouble last time and you asked them to help you out. No, no, no you called me last time when you, when you was in a jam, see? No, here's the point. They went as a group. They had a team. They had a team. Now, I'm going to teach you how to put a team together. I'm going to show you how to do that. I'm going to show you who's in, who's out, and all that. But you need to, first of all, understand that you don't compartmentalize that part of your life. Get that for a minute. This team, this team, there are different, there's no, there's no hard and fast rule. Again, I'm going to teach you how to do that. Uh, uh, your, team could be, your team could be your therapist. Can I get a man for a man for therapist in the house? No, but my point is somebody who's walking with you. Y'all see where I'm going? Walking with you. Uh, uh, your team could be a small group. Uh, your team could be your prayer partner. Uh, there's no particular size. You know, could be a mentor or whatever. I'm gonna teach you how to do all that. But the point is, you don't fish alone. They went in a group. Why is that significant? Be because you 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 will need, especially if you start from scratch, you will need someone. To whom you make yourself vulnerable. You, you, you'll need somebody, somebody who can uh, handle your mess. I tried to say that as delicate as I could. <laughs> I'm going to come back to mess in a minute. Um, you need someone whose wisdom you trust. And you trust them because they love you. Let me say it again. Uh, some of these guys were brothers. In this group, see? You need someone who loves you, listen to me, but who loves you enough to tell you the truth. We, uh, we, we were fishing one time, and, and evidently the, and I'm going to talk about wounds in a minute. We, we caught a fish, and the fish was flapping everything. And, and, and we got pulled the fish up, and the fish had like a scar or something. I didn't know what it was. It had a scar on it. And the guy who was with us, he said, he said, you got to throw that one back. That's what he mean. I said, you got to throw that one back. Now, it was one of those catch and release things anyway. But he said, throw that one back. I said, what do you mean? He said, that, that fish has been wounded. Now, I was so happy to catch a fish. I was going to take the fish wounded and all. But you need somebody on your team to say, now that fish is jacked up, that fish is messed up, that fish will not help you. You need to throw that fish back. You need somebody on your team to tell you the truth who loves you. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm still working on it. You need someone to whom you can be vulnerable. You need someone who you can trust to tell you the truth, who will love you enough to tell you the truth. I'm gonna teach you how to do that. Here we go. So you need a boat. Uh, you need a team. Here's the third thing. You need a net. You need a net. Now listen to me. The net is a symbol of your life. Here's what I mean. In, in John, I'm sorry, in Matthew 4, 21, similar fish story. In Matthew 4, it says that Jesus found, came upon these guys, and there were only a team of three, Matthew, Mark, and Luke. I'm, I'm sorry, uh, Peter, James, and John. Peter, James, and John. And it says, these three guys are about to go, but when, when Jesus found them, they were mending their nets. Matthew 4, 21. They were mending their nets. Now, listen to me. 
The word men has two nuances to it, same word. One word means they were just getting ready to fish. I promise it's going to make sense in a minute. One, one meaning of that word mending means just getting ready to fish. Listen to me. But there's a more technical term that means mending in the sense of, listen, cleaning, fixing, or repairing nets that are either broken or dirty. Let me go back to this, this spiritual side over here. It says they were mending their nets. Now listen to me. L listen. The word mending, it means just getting ready to fish. But more than that, it means this. It means, it means mending as in fixing. Uh, it means uh, to repair. See? Uh, it means to clean as in clean up. Why? Here's the culture of the times. When people were fishing, when, 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 when guys were fishing, they mostly fished by nets. You, you, I don't never, never see nobody fishing with a fishing pole in, in, in Scripture. They fish more with nets. Now, listen to me. When you fish with nets, two things happen. Number one, you run the risk that the net can get broken. That when the fish are caught and they're flopping around and flopping around, flopping around, they can break your net. Number two, in your net, you might catch debris. You might catch a uh, seaweed. You might catch fish that are already wounded. But when you draw in your net, you realize something's wrong with my net. It ain't a fish problem. I have a net problem. Now listen to me. My net could be broken or my net could be dirty. Because when you have fished so long, whether you caught anything or not, the throwing in and throwing out of your net into the waters, you are likely to either have a net that is broken or a net that is dirty. Now, now listen, now listen. The dirt, the dirt implies just in the normal activities of fishing. You're not trying to catch seaweed. But I have been fishing and my, 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 my pole caught Caught, and, 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 and the guy who was the guy said, said no, you, you can bring it in and let me clean it. I said, wait a minute, you clean it. He said, that's just weed. That's just seaweed. I said, I ain't catching He said, I know I ain't catching That's why I want you to clean it up, see? So, so, so you're not trying. But just in the normal activities of fishing, you can catch the wrong thing. And the net needs cleaning. Or the net can be broken. Uh, uh, we, 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 we were fishing. We were fishing. And uh, 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 we, we caught this fish, and the guy was explaining to me that these boats on the other side of us, they were commercial fishers, and, and they were fishing by nets, and they were cleaning their nets. So what do you mean? He said, well, when you catch the fish, uh, like, you know, and you pull them in, he says, the fish start flopping. Fish start flopping, see? Start flopping. And when the fish start flopping, they can break your net. So when you bring the net in, you have to inspect the net to see if the net is broken from the last time you fished. All right, I'm going back over here. You need to check your net to see if that last fish broke you up. We, we, caught, we, we, we caught this fish one time, and, and we was, bring him in, bring him in, bring him in. And, and, and I noticed before we went fishing in Alaska, they gave us these boots. Boots came up to here, and they gave us this jacket. Jacket came down here. Boots up to here, jacket down here. Rubber. I said, what? We, you know, we're not, we're not going to stand in the water, are we? He said, no, it's all right. You'll see. You'll see. I said, are we going to stand on the tree? He said, no, 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 you, you'll see. Sure enough, we went, and man, we caught a fish about this big, about this, this big. And we pulled the fish in, and the fish came into the boat, we took the hook out, and the fish just started flopping, flopping, flopping all over the boat, flopping, flopping. And after a while, I noticed that my boots was covered with blood. Then I remember what that man said. You will find out. <laughs> His point was, when you bring the fish in, the fish can get you dirty. When you catch the fish, sometimes the fish that you catch 
can either break your neck or dirty up your life. Mending, mending means either you fix because it's broken or you clean because it's dirty. I'm back to the team. You need a team that will keep you accountable for not sacrificing your holiness. You need somebody on your team to remind you that you broke some rules with this relationship that you normally wouldn't break. When you thought that Jesus was first in your life, but because you wanted him or her that bad, you compromised and you came to the point where you reprioritized your life and you ended up with a dirty life. That's why some of y'all are hurt not just because you broke up, but because of the way he left you. It's because of the compromises that you had to do to get the person that you didn't keep. You need a clean net. I got to rush on. Here's number four. You need a boat. You need a team. You need a net. Here's the fourth thing. You need a reality check. Go back to the text. Verse 3 said, yo, what, what have you caught? What, hey, you caught, you caught anything? Are they biting? What, yo, how's it going? They said, we haven't caught anything. They said, what have you caught? We've caught nothing. Listen to me. Here's the cultural problem with that. Fishermen fish for a living. Their identities are tied up in being fishermen and how good they are. Listen to me. So the average fisherman will not easily confess that he failed. The, the average fisherman will not admit to you that, well, what are you, I'm a fisherman, and you didn't catch nothing? So the fact that they were honest enough to admit they hadn't caught anything meant they were honest enough to admit that what they were doing was not working. We've caught nothing. We tried all night long. And if you want to know the truth, we didn't catch anything. What we've been doing all night ain't working. You, you need a reality check. You, you, you need a level of, conf, of, 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 of honesty with yourself that what you've been doing ain't working. So watch this. I'm moving on quickly to the next one. You need a new strategy. Number one, you need to be honest. But number five, you need a different strategy. Here's what Jesus said. Hey, hey, hey. Cast your net on the right side. Now listen to me. Right side did not mean right versus left. And didn't mean right versus wrong. It's not that they were doing wrong what they were doing. The point is they were doing what they knew to do and it wasn't working. So right side simply means it's right if that's where they bite. Y'all ain't got it. It doesn't mean you've been doing nothing wrong. It doesn't mean you've been doing something wrong. No. It, ju it just means that what you're doing is not work working. So you try something different. So the right side means shift to the side where your odds of catching are higher. How do you know? Jesus says, when you switch, he says, you may catch some. No guarantee, no number, never told him how many. He said, you may catch, listen to me, because dating is a numbers game. D -d dating is a numbers game. He said, cast on the other side. Go to the other side. 
what you've been doing on this side has not been working. So you can see them going up and down, up and down, up, up and down the, uh, 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 the lake, the lake on the left side, on the left side, on this side, on that side, all night long, and they caught nothing. Jesus simply said, yo, huh? why don't you just try something different? Go to the other side. Uh, there's a great verse I learned uh, about 40 years ago from a friend of mine, Dr. E.K. Bailey. It's in Psalm 107. Psalm 107. You can check it out later on. Psalm 107, verse 23, it says this. I love it. It says, those who go down to the sea in ships. Watch this now. It's a great verse. Those who go down to sea in ships who do business see, in great, great waters. Verse 24 says this. They, these are the ones, see, the, these are the ones who see the works of the Lord. One version said, who see the wonders of the Lord, he says, and they see his wonders in the deep. Okay, y'all ain't got him. He's comparing fishing in deep waters with fishing on the shore. Y'all ain't got it yet. You, you can stand. As a matter of fact, matter of fact, there's a place in Montana, and they stand, they stand, they stand. You can see them up and down the side of the lake. They stand, and they do fly, fly fishing. It's a beautiful thing. Do fly fishing and everything. And, but they stand. Now, listen to me. They stand, and basically, you're fishing in shallow water. And we go up, my son and I go to, up, up to uh, Montana, and, and we fish different, all kinds of species of trout. Trout fishing, see? And you can do that in shallow water. But we went to Alaska, and we caught some, some bass. We caught some halibut. We caught some, some cod. We caught some salmon. By the way, anybody want some fish? I got so much fish, I don't know what to do. Okay, holler back at your boy. Let me fix you up, okay? We got fish for days, y'all. Listen to me. But it's deep sea fishing. L -l 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 listen. You can't catch halibut in shallow water. We caught a fish. We, listen, listen, listen. We caught this fish. That fish is almost as big as my son. You can't catch that in shallow water. The Bible says the ones that go out into the deep, they're the ones who see the wonders. They're the ones who catch the biggins. They're the ones who see the mighty works of God. See, now, now listen, there's nothing wrong with fishing on the shore. You just won't catch big ones. <laughs> I'm just saying, I'm, I'm just saying. Because the text says, those who go out in the deep water, they're the ones who see the wonders, the miracles, the, uh, the things that are far exceeding above what you thought of me. They're the ones who see the hand of God in a way you'll never see it. But you've got to get off of the shore. Some of you have blazed a trail up and down the, the shore the most you got is a, is a sore on your foot because you've been walking up and down and you've blazed the trail. Lord, watch this. Up and down all night long. All night long, just walking up and down. On the same shore. Let me help somebody. I'm going to teach you how to change your traffic pattern. See if I can help you. Uh... I'm going to teach you how to go over your week, trace your steps, and ask yourself questions like this. Where do you go every day? Most of you will say, to work, all right? You go to work every day. And you see the same people. All right, all right. Uh, you got a special place where you go to the store, you know, Ralph's, whatever, you go to the store, you know, and you go to the store. 
you're still going up and down the same. Sure. <laughs> and you go to the store and you see the same people. And then every seven days you get spiritual. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, saints. Praise the Lord. And you walk up and down the same church with the same people. I'm going to teach you how to change your traffic pattern. Because if you stay on the soil, seeing the same people, you've already decided ain't nobody out of that group you want. So why do you continue to traffic in the same pattern? We, 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 we did a survey a couple, couple weeks ago. This was true, people out of this church, we did a survey in this church. And we asked them, couples asked them, where did you meet your mate? Okay, I'm almost done. Where did you meet your mate? And so this was a survey. Number one, number one was church. See, church. All right, I got that. I, I got that. I got that. You spiritual people, everybody, you know. You know. In the middle of the A and B selection, I met my lover in, in, in Jesus' name. You know. How'd you do it? Well, I was lifting my hands to the Lord and I looked down the row and I took my eyes off Jesus and put my eyes on him. <laughs> okay, so I got that. I got that. Some of y'all deep were spiritual. I, 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 met, I met my love uh, in church, okay? The second most popular one was, listen, I met my, my, my person, I met them at work. I told you, you got a job in your you know, business. Maybe, maybe, maybe you travel, whatever, you miss somebody on your drive. Now, listen to me. The number three most common place, close number three, was online. Child, I ain't going online. You don't never know what you're going to catch. Them people hanging out online, baby, I ain't going over there. You don't never... I heard about a slasher that found somebody in New Orleans about 19 years ago online. I ain't going online, baby. Number three. Number three. Now listen to me. I'm going to teach you how to date online. I'm going to teach you the do's. I'm going to teach you the don'ts. I'm going to teach you the ones to stay away from. I'm going to teach you how to do it. It's number three. Close number three. We have people out of this church, as you just said, you know, who met somebody online. Now, now, so I'm going to get rid of all your stigmas, see? I'm going to get all your horror stories and, 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 and you know, all the things you saw on the, under, on the, on the wrong website. I'm going to teach you how to get all that, okay? I'm, I'm, I'm going to give you a team, teach you how to get a team. I'm going to reemphasize the value of being in the boat with a relationship with Christ. I'm going to teach you how to prioritize godly standards. I'm going to teach you, listen, I'm going to teach you where and when to draw the line. I'm going to teach you where and when to draw the line. I'm going to teach you how to put a team together. I'm going to teach you how to get a new strategy and how to change your traffic pattern. I've heard people say, you know, well, well, uh, I, I was going to come, uh, Bishop, but... but um, Everybody there, everybody there will be somebody who's looking to find somebody. I don't want to be in that crowd. Duh. <laughs> Let me understand. Let me understand. This is a gathering of people who are looking for a date. Ain't shame of it. One date. But you don't want to go because the people there will be people looking for a date. <laughs> Am I missing something here? Uh, one guy said, one, one they said, said this, she said, she said, well, first of all, ain't going to be no men there. Then second of all, I said, let me understand. You, you go to church? Say, yeah. She said, I've been, I've, been, oh, I've been here several years. She said, so let me understand. So the men that are not coming are the men that you've eliminated already. So there's nobody in this church that you've been attracted to. And they ain't coming no way. 
What am I missing here? See, the key is this. When I teach you how to change your traffic pattern, I'm going to show you it has nothing to do with who will be in that room. So the men showing up or the women showing up is irrelevant when you expand your traffic pattern. I'm going to show you how to do that. Here's how I want to close. We're going to build a community. We're going to have some fun. Have a lot of fun. Have fun. Uh, we're going to show you some things that you've heard before. You're going to hear them differently. Somebody said to me this after the first service. They said, Bishop, I never thought about the fact that I see the same people all the time. I just never thought about that. That's very fundamental. I'm going to teach you how to hear some things that you've heard before. I'm going to teach you how to do some things that you've not known before. I'm going to teach you how to stay in the boat. Now, this story is a story about fishermen. Why is that important? Because it's really an extension of Jesus' call. Jesus says, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. And then he says, here's what it's going to look like. You're going to cast your net with this group over here and no one's going to respond. You're going to cast it again on this side and no one's going to respond. And then God's going to open up a door in an area you have not cast before. And you'll get a bite. Listen to me. Listen, listen. I cannot tell you in 40 years, 40 years, how many times I have cast the net. And no one came. I cannot tell you how many times I have presented the hook of the love of Christ. And nobody bit the book. Nobody bit the hook. And then I read this story and Jesus simply says, cast again. Fishermen never give up. Fishermen expect to cast again. Fishermen are not deterred when no one bites. And so Jesus says, you simply cast your net in a different place. And so I want to start with the context. I want to cast the net. Maybe you've never accepted Jesus the Christ into your Lord, your life as Lord and Savior. Maybe you didn't even intend to stay on this, on this website. Maybe you were just channel surfing or whatever. Uh, Maybe, maybe you intended to watch something else and God stopped you here. I cast the net of the love of Christ. I share with you this love that was so great that God gave his only begotten son. I, I cast this net of the love of Christ who, who loved you so much that he gave his life. And some of you will hear and you will say no. But I'm, uh, I'm launching out into the deep of deep faith. And I believe God has brought someone And when you catch, when, when, you, when, when, when you're caught and brought into the boat, there's joy. There's joy. 
There's celebration. And maybe you're in this room right now. Maybe you're watching online. I'm going to go way out into the water today. Maybe you're in this room right now and you've never accepted Jesus Christ or you have deprioritized your relationship with God. Back in the day, we called it rededicating. But maybe you're here today and you've heard the voice of Jesus calling. Will you say yes? Now listen. Whenever, 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 whenever uh, there's a bite, whenever there's a bite, everybody in the boat, everybody, everybody on the team, everybody cheers. Yeah, man, come on. Really, 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 really. So when you come, when you come, I don't care what part of this room you're in. When you start making your way into this boat, everybody around you is going to start celebrating and rejoicing and praising God for your decision. If you're watching online, watching online, uh, if, if you say, um, um, I'm saying yes, or something like that, or I receive something, you, you're going to see claps in the chat. Because I'm just trusting God. And I'm casting again. And so maybe you're here. Maybe you're here. And I'm, I'm long. I'm over, I'm over time. Uh, but, but, but you can't fish in a hurry. So maybe there's one. That's, that's, that's what you say in the old Baptist church. Is there one? Is there one? Is there one? Who would say yes? Not yes to me. Yes to the Lord Jesus. If that's you, won't you come symbolically into this boat? Won't you come? Meet me here at this altar. Meet me, just meet me at this altar. If, if you'd say yes, and, and I don't know who you came with, but whoever you came with, they'll wait on you. And when you get up and start coming this way, folk around you are going to start celebrating and rejoicing and clapping and praising God just be, because you've now come into the boat. If that's you, if that's you, won't you come? If you're online, if you're online, just say, that's me, that's me. If that's you, won't you come? If you're here today, won't you come? Won't you come? Fish, fish are not concerned about who sees them getting into the boat. They just get into the boat and they're just so happy to be there. Maybe there's someone here today. Maybe there's someone here today. I'm going to close in a minute. Close in a minute. And just think, out of all the fish in the ocean, God called you. If that's you, won't you come? Here. You're here. You're here. You're here. Yeah. Now, somebody needs to celebrate. If you're not coming this way, don't walk. If you're not coming this way, don't walk. Now, that's all right. That's all right. No problem. That's all right. 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 You're not coming this way, don't walk. No. But there's someone. There is. There is. Watch this. Well, there is. There is. There is. There is. There is. If you're not coming this way, don't walk right now, okay? If you're coming this way, now somebody ought to help me celebrate. I wish I had a celebrating boat. I wish I had a celebrating boat. Oh, come on. If that was your sister, you'd be doing better than that. If that was your girlfriend, you'd be doing better than that. Maybe there's someone else. Oh, come on. Help me. L let's just praise like the, like the boat's getting filled. Someone else. Someone else. Someone else. Someone else. Someone else. No, no, no. Don't, 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 don't stop praising. No. Pra pra praise till something happens. Yeah. Someone else. Someone else. Someone else. Someone else. Someone else. Someone else. Starts today, 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 starts today. Someone else, someone else, someone else. Yes, 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 yes. Don't stop, don't stop, don't stop, don't stop, don't stop. Some some folk had to get praised in. Someone today. Someone today. Someone today. Someone today. Someone today. You can't fish in a hurry. Can't fish in a hurry. Oh, come on, come on. If that was your family, you'd be rejoicing. Come on, come on, come on. Help me somebody, help me somebody. I need about 23 praises in here. Someone else, there's someone else, someone else, there's 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 someone else. Spirit of the Lord says there's someone else. You don't, if you, if you don't get tired of praising, God won't get tired of moving.
still coming, still coming, still coming, still coming, still coming, still coming, still coming. It's like there's nobody in this room but me and you, and I'm talking like I'm talking directly to you, like I'm talking like I'm talking to nobody in this room but you. That's not me. That's how much God loves you. 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 Yes, 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 yes. There's someone else. 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 Yes, 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 yes. Yes, again. Don't stop. Don't stop. Don't stop. Again, let me just ask you. Listen. Unless it's an emergency, unless it's an emergency that you're not, not walking, unless you're coming this way, coming this way, okay? There's someone else. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, do that which only you can do. Touch hearts and change lives. You move and we will celebrate. We will rejoice. We'll do it in Jesus' name. Here's what I'm going to do. Everyone's standing, everyone's standing, everyone's standing. Everyone's standing. Everyone's standing. I want to make sure that someone's with everyone here. Someone. Father, it's been a good day. It is the day that you have made and we have rejoiced. We have been glad in it. Now, Lord, we thank you for every man, every woman, every boy, every girl that stands at this altar. Thank you for this family. Thank you for this woman of God. Thank you, O oh God, for the love that you have released in this house. Now, Father, we will not take it lightly. We will declare this is a house of God. It is the house of God for all men and women and that your love abounds in this place. Now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ, the power of God, the presence of the Holy Spirit rest on us, rule in us and abide with us now and forevermore. And we ask it in the matchless name of Jesus. Everybody said amen. God bless you. See you next week.